Hi, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I'm a technical staff member at IBM in the UK. This series is covering the Power 10 machines as part of the early ship program. That's before they become publicly available. This is the S1024 first look. You may have seen sessions on the Power 10 and the E1080. That's the first machine that came out. It's the largest in the range many new features and functions of these Power 10 servers. We're now looking at the S1024, what does it actually look like, what are the major components, and we'll remove some to give you a better look at what's going on. This presentation is based on this early ship machine, and it arrived in the UK in late April 2022. That's a full three months before the GA date. If you're new to early ship program, then pause the video and read what's on the right hand side. Let's take the lid off, press the button, we'll handle that, came back slightly, and we lift it up. Got a plastic battle, I think this is a handle here, and I just hold it here, and we can lift it up. Quick tool around the machine, out the front we have the SSDs. In here is memory, memory, and memory. If we unclip the buttons here, we can lift the cover off. So here's an airflow diagram, airflow towards the back. Before we continue with the video where we look at the memory, I need to give you a warning, do not add or remove or replace memory on your Power 10 server. When we get to the end of the section, I'll tell you why. So back to the machine, this is the OMI memory card, the 2U size. You can see the chips there, the copper covered unit is the controller that does the encryption and there's more chips on the back. Align them with the slots, gently push them down and in it goes. Airflow, to do with the covers and the covers here. Well, that all looked fairly straightforward, but the processor and memory on Power 10 computers are not customer replaceable units, the CRUs. So, what are you going to do about that? Well, you need to call your local IBM representative to arrange a customer engineer or CE to do this for you. In previous generations, it was true for the processor, but it's now true for the processor and the memory. I've got a little cover in here, a little plastic baffle. Uh, here, I think this is to increase airflow across here. You'll notice that the power supply isn't symmetric, it's not quite in the middle. There's one, two, three, four, five PCI slots in here, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots in here. One of these is the service processor. So here's the heat sinks on top, uh, a nice aluminium on top, copper down the bottom to draw the uh, heat out. Not sure if you can quite see it in here, but down in here is the... Uh, down behind the heatsink there is the VPD device that has the vital product data, like the serial numbers, what resources have been paid for and activated inside the machine. Blue handles around in here are the VRMs, voltage regulator modules. They take the 12 volts or 5 volts coming from the power supplies and drop it to the low voltage that we use in memory and the CPU is somewhere around one volt. Of course, it's very high amps. And we can lift out the VRM. We can see a lot of copper in here because of the ampage involved in the uh, controller around the back. We drop these in. We have to go back in the right slot. Slide down and match the bracket at the bottom. When you get that right, it's quite easy push the handles back down. I'll swing you around to the other side of the machine. So here's the uh, the lollipop. The uh, ID of the machine is on that. Here is the service processor, an EBMC. Won't lift that out. You'll see it's not PCIe slot. Special connectors and special uh, release handles here and here. 
10 and here we have the adapters to release an adapter pop the lock on one end and we reach in and pull the adapter out this is a simple four port ethernet adapter drop that in make sure it goes in the slot at the bottom gently push it down lock it into place in version one of the video i realized that i didn't cover the nvme solid state drive controller that connects to the storage at the front so here's a video that i took later on not easy to see because it's all black it's slightly taller towards the front of the machine so the cables plug in they run along this channel by the side of the processors coming out here and plug into the rear of the nvme drives at the front of the machine we now go around to the back of the machine quickly show you taking out a power supply no fuss very simple to do you've seen these sorts of power supplies on many occasions put the plastic shield over so air flows down if you want to get technical this rubber edge in here i'm going to put this down there like that drop it in you see this sits nicely on the corner here and it all seems to match up when it's under the level of the top then we'll put the lid back on make sure this is in the up position and put that lip in here and the rivet here goes down this slot so just line that up there and drop it down and it's still loose but if you push that forward it locks the whole thing nice and firm. Here we are at the front of the machine, power S1024. Uh, your serial codes are down in here. This is actually your handle that we use to pull the machine out of the rack. You can also see in here the screw we use to lock it into the rack. Here we have the on off button and the little warning and identification uh, LEDs pop up in here and uh, if we hold these two things give it a pull then we've got the front cover off you can have an optional led display in here gives you some code as the machine starts up and along the front in here we have all the displays in this machine we've only got this set bay active there's uh, the electronics behind here that goes back to the nvme adapter at the back of the machine we only got four SSDs and you've seen this all before. Release the catch, pull the handle down and pop it up. Nice little card inside using the... Um... Then we look at one of the fans. We have one, two, three, four, five, six fans in here now. Pop the button, pull it out. It's what's known as a blower, so it's a centrifugal fan rather than a blade going around. You can see the blades uh, inside in here and the connector. Very simple. Pop it back in. Put this back on here. Quite simple. There we are. Nice, simple design in special stealth black paint with the hexagonal holes to maximize the airflow. Now, if you're really observant, you'll find that there's something missing on the front of the machine covered by a blanking plate. So I asked the Austin guys what's going on here and it's an optional op panel LCD display. Quite a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? The op panels aren't used very much. Typically if there's problems with it booting very early on then we can get codes off it to help support. But otherwise they're not used much. I saw one person maybe a decade ago put an IP address on the service processor using the op panel and after about 200 clicks it worked which is fine i plug my machines into the hmc and the hmc sorts out the network so i've got ben younger my ce or officially known as a system service representative now to put one into my machine you can do this live with the machine running ben actually made a video of him doing this in the computer room he's already removed the planking plate it's just clipped in but be careful with it you don't want to break it He's taken the front panel off. He did that with one hand. He's holding the camera in the other. That's the uh, little blanking cover. And then here's the actual unit. And the connector at the back. It just pushes in and clips in. Give it a nice firm uh, push. 
and you can see the little uh, shape moving around the screen as it's self-diagnostics that it's already started using it you can do this with the machine uh, up and running there's no harm in that it's a customer replaceable unit and it even puts the cover back on one-handed clips in with a little push and there as well thank you ben well that concludes the first look around the actual machine itself and inside this is an infographics i've got other videos that go into great detail but i'd just like to highlight some of them uh, the performance of the S1024 is over twice the performance of the S924. The memory, and it will go up to 8 terabytes a little later on. The fabric between the chips is uh, double the performance. We now go up to this 48 CPUs, just a fraction under 4 gigahertz. You need a HMC, CL1, CL2, or the virtual HMC to control these machines. We now have the Gen 5 adapter slots. No SAS drives, no spinning disks inside the machine anymore. That's gone, that's history. We're now using the NVMe solid state disks and any of those disks can be assigned to any virtual machine or VIO server. On the price side, um, I've looked at similar config for the Power 9 in terms of RPERS for the Power 10. So the same performance, it will be a, a lower list price, something like 20 to 30%. Of course, if you buy the full performance you get with the S1024, then you expect the price to go up, but it won't double. It will be less than that when we actually have the numbers. Uh, I'll share those as well. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to watch out for more videos in this series.